And the GMs around the NBA think that the Bucks are going to be the NBA champions. They're very confident in the Bucs. Well, guess who else is confident in the Bucs? A gentleman by the name of Giannis Attentacumpo. Here's what he said about the upcoming season. He said, quote, just the habits that we've built in these five games, being the preseason, I think defensively, the way we played and were really active as a team covering for one another, but going 5-0 and oh doesn't mean nothing. As we move forward, it gets harder and harder, and hopefully in these five games, we build good habits that can carry over into the regular season. Jalen Rose, the Bucs are 5-0 in the preseason, as Giannis mentioned, and the GMs think that the Bucs are going to be champions. What do you think could hold this team back in the Eastern Conference? Oh, I'll tell you a glaring weakness in today's landscape of the NBA that may stop the Milwaukee Bucks from winning it all. Ooh. You tell me your top duos in the league this year. Oh, I've got tons. My favorites, I mean, AD LeBron, we got PG and Kawhi, we got Westbrook and Harden, we've got KP and Luka, and we've got many more. There's obviously the Brooklyn one, which is going to be half of a duo, and others, but those are the main ones that come to mind. And the reason why I bring that up is you didn't say the Bucks. Mm -mm. And so while Chris Middleton was a first-time All-Star and I liked this game and I appreciated him elevating it, I'm not sure if that duo coupled with losing Brogdon along with Bledsoe once a playoff series starts is going to be enough consistent perimeter firepower as well as shot making off the dribble i mm. like how brooke lopez reinvented himself from a player that played primarily on the post to a center that now made 170 plus threes last year knockdown shooter i like them adding his brothers gonna give him some defense and some some more height along with Giannis. they're gonna be formidable up front but i just don't think they're going to be as stout as the philadelphia 76ers for example in their own conference like you, like you mentioned, I really think the Bucs might have the best record in the league, but I would imagine in a seven-game series, I would pick the Sixers, and I would heavily favor the Sixers in a seven-game series. I think the Sixers come out of the East, and you were mentioning those duos, and I think one of the most under-talked about, under-appreciated duos in the NBA are these two gentlemen from overseas. Kristaps Porzingis and Luka Doncic. They were in some preseason action, and Chris Stapps reminded everybody why he is called the unicorn. He doesn't just do it on offense from inside and outside. He will play defense and rim protect with the best of them. That's two blocks in one possession right there. And then on the other end, you have this put back. Chris Porzingis gets so many put back dunks. And of course, Luka Doncic just running the show is going to be something to deal with. What do you think? A realistic expectations are for these Dallas Mavericks? I think of all of the top duos in the league, this one right here is going to make more three-pointers combined than any of the others. Ooh, good point. And the beauty of that is one of the guys is 6'7", the other guy is 7'3". And I told you, there are probably going to be three people in the league that average at least 20 and two blocks. Joel Embiid, Anthony Davis come to mind and Porzingis is the third one so there has never been any question other than draft day because he was just an unknown commodity about his ability to be productive on the floor he just dealt with some injury history he had some issues with the Knicks he wanted to be moved he had an unfortunate situation happen to him overseas at a nightclub but on the floor with Luka, I'm saying this is going to be like Steve Nash in his prime, but for Phoenix when he was winning MVPs, and Dirk in his MVP prime when he was with the Mavs, but they got both of these guys so very early in their careers. So Luka Doncic last year kind of took the league by storm, especially early in the season. Trey Young sort of came on at the end and gave him a chase for Rookie of the Year. I wonder if Luka can continue that. I hope I hope there's no sort of like Spider Mitchell style sophomore slump in the future for Luka. And he played really well last night against these Clippers. You know, he got a lot of assists and a lot of points, but he did have nine turnovers. Do you think that Doncic could be plagued by turnovers this season? Well, it's all about who you build around your young stars to allow them to flourish. And if you notice, you mentioned Spider Mitchell. That was a good example. What did they do? 
Brought in Mike Conley so he mm -hmm. doesn't have to only be the primary ball handler and creator. Brought in Bogdanovich, a guy that can get his own shot off the dribble and can shoot the three. For Luka, that's what the Mavs will now do. You see that those are going to be your you see that that's going to be your dynamic duel. So now you continue to build out the roster to guys that help support their strengths. And I think that Rick Carlisle and his coaching style is going to allow those guys to continue to flourish. They're going to be dynamic to watch. I do not expect Luka to take a step back in his development. One thing about this duo that's worth pointing out, every other duo around the league, they're either at their peak or maybe a little bit beyond their peak in terms of their NBA career. This is the only sort of like superstar duo in the league that's still ascending, that still has a lot of room to get better. And I hope that this duo stays together in Dallas because I believe at one point they will win a championship if they do. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.